Hey friends, welcome to Chemistry Lover and in this video I am discussing about a very interesting question and I can say you that after watching this video you will feel good because it is indeed a very interesting one. So you can see uh, this is a basically a hydroboration reaction on this alkyne because alkynes also undergo hydro hydroboration reaction and it is one of the elegant uh, application of the hydroboration rea reaction because after hydroboration reaction they used a second step of the reaction and after that they got these vinyl halides and the interesting part of this reaction is by using different strategy they got two different isomers so in one case they got the trans product and in other case they got the cis product okay and uh, why uh, they are getting these two different outcome that is very interesting so let me uh, discuss the mechanism of this reaction and the explanation that why they are getting these two different products so uh, you all know the hydroboration reaction because it is a very simple and uh, elementary reaction which is taught in bsc level so if this alkyne undergoes hydroboration reaction it is bulky boronic hydride what will happen so this boron will arrange its uh, it away from this R group so this will be the reducibility of the reaction and out of that you will get this product as the first step product okay so this boron and this R group they will be trans to one another because this hydrogen and this boron they should be cis. This is the uh, stereospecificity of the hydroboration reaction, which is a stereospecific reaction. Now, in the first case, when they so I will first discuss the case of bromine where they got the cis product because that is uh, simple, right? So there they first add this bromine. Okay, so if you add bromine here, what will happen? So your alkyl will add up on this bromine to give you this bromonium ion, bromonium cation, and here is got you will get this. So here you will get this, right? Now on this bromonium ion, you can see. So you can see we are adding the base and this bromine in two different states so after addition of this bromonium there is no other nucleophile so the only nucleophile present here is the another bromide minus Br minus so this Br minus now can open it like this and that will basically give you this here you have R here you have this bromine here you have this okay so this you will get now after that what you will do so now you add sodium methoxide which is a base so what it will do so this sodium methoxide will attack on this boron right so it will attack if it attacks on this boron then it will acquire a negative charge and this bond will be broken now after that this bromide can be eliminated but for that this bond and this bond they should have the anti periplanarity right so it will this bond will rotate and you will get this so here you have R now this will go upward so here you have this so this is boron this boron is group and if you rotate it like this so what we, what will happen? This bromine will go uh, below the bone, not actually below the bone, but other side of the bone. That is the side where this R group is. And now this methoxide side comes. So it will add up on this bromine. This bond will break, and finally this bromide will be eliminated to give you this product. So you can see in this rotation step this bromine and this R they becomes cis to one another so this is the key step of this reaction and this is how you get the cis product and this is fairly simple 
to explain this phenomenon is fairly, fairly uh, simple. But now let us discuss why we get different outcome when we use iodine. And actually, we not only use iodine, but here we add the reagent in different way. So what we do is we add either this uh, OH minus that is basically NaOH and this iodine in the same step or first we add NaOH and then iodine. So if we first add NaOH what it will do? So it will coordinate with this boron like this. So it will have a negative charge and then there will have R group. Now we will add iodine. So it will add up on iodine to generate the iodonium ion, the same like the bromonium ion. So here you have this R group, and here you can see this is the boronic group. Here you have this OH minus this. Now previously people explained try to explain this by simply saying that this ionium ion is not generated here and uh, actually they said that this bond will add up on this iodine to give you this transpolar right because this bromine is negative picture so this bond will be broken but it is actually not the correct mechanism why because when they did the reaction they observed that uh, the rate at which this iodine disappears is actually slow uh, faster than the rate at which this product is formed so that means uh, the disappearance of this iodine and production of this product is not happening in the same step. So we can say that this should not be the mechanism because if this would be the mechanism then uh, the disappearance of iodine, the rate of disappearance of iodine and the formation of this would be same. So we discard the mechanism. So uh, the other explanation is this iodonium ion will be formed but now you can see uh, with so in this phase you will get I minus. So with I minus there is also this OH minus present and which is more proximate to the molecule, right? So this OH minus which is now attached to this uh, boron or some other OH minus, they can attack over here to open this iodonium. So it will form this R and here it is iodine. Uh, here you have boron like this. So now they propose that this would be a neutral boronic ester, right? So uh, this OH minus will no longer bound to this boron, that is this boron. Here it is negatively charged, but here uh, which is basically uh, undergoing the elimination reaction, this would be a neutral species they proposed. And here interestingly it doesn't undergo the anti-elimination rather it undergoes the cis elimination or syn elimination and for that these group and this group they should be thin periplanar so which and now again for rotation is required to make it periplanar syn periplanar so if you rotate this bond down you can see what will happen this iodine will come forward right and you can see now this iodine and this R group they are trans to one another so now like the Peterson elimination reaction it will attack here, the bond will go and the bond will break to give you this product. Okay, and this is not a very uncommon reaction because in several boron compounds this syn elimination occurs. So it is convinced. So this is the explanation how you get uh, the tran uh, trans product in case of iron. So for this particular reaction, what you have to remember is that uh, whether you are adding the base. Uh, in the first step or in the second step because that is the determining factor. I hope I am able to make you understand this concept. So if you like this video then give a thumbs up and if you are new in this channel then subscribe my channel and thank you for watching.